Morning, Nigel. Can Morning. you give us an update on Farron Rawson, firstly? Yeah, well, he's back in, uh, not training, but he's back in the building and uh, moving around, which is good, uh, which is more than he was doing on Saturday when he got knocked out, but uh, being checked over and everything, and we'll keep a close eye on him. Uh, won't be risked this weekend uh, for obvious reasons, uh, but good to see him up and around and still feeling a little bit groggy, uh, uh, but the main thing is, OK, he's going to be all right. Have you spoken to him? I take it he can't remember the incident? No, no, he can't. He just remembers the ball going over his head. Uh, and that's about it after that. And then, uh, you know, waking up uh, a few minutes later and then going to hospital. So, uh, which is, I think, pretty normal in, in those circumstances. Just a final word on that and the care that was provided by Salford City and Salford Royal Hospital. Excellent. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, all the medical staff hours in Salford's uh, straight on, on there. Um, and it doesn't matter the, the, the length of the delay in the game and things like that. All that matters is, is the care for the player. Uh, and they're all absolutely spot on. Hospital looked after him and everything. Uh, Tom Whittemore stayed behind with the physio and, uh, and drove him home late on Saturday night. Uh, so he got, got the best possible care that he could have had. Because that could have been more serious than it eventually has turned out, couldn't it? Because it looked in real time like he was knocked out before he hit the deck and he could have landed so much more awkwardly. Yeah, well, I think that's the thing he didn't see. Uh, obviously, Jamie should have shouted, but he didn't see him. Uh, and so the collision is one, you know, where your body's not prepared for it. Uh, and as I say, by the time he hit the floor, he was out. Uh, so we're all just thankful that he's all right. Yesterday, it was announced that uh, Stegg's longest-serving player, currently Mel Benning, will leave the club at the end of the season. Um, how did that come about, that decision mutually, for Mal to depart at the end of the campaign? Yeah, well, I had a chat with Mal uh, last week uh, and just sort of said, you know, what are your thoughts? And uh, we were sort of edging towards uh, obviously not offering him anything for next season. And he, he said, you know, well, I think I need a fresh challenge. Uh, so uh, I think it's in everybody's best interest that uh, after six years he moves on and gets himself another club. But he goes with everybody's best wishes here and thanks. And we're we're very much aware of, of what a great servant he's been over those six years and you know you lose a good solid dependable player uh, but we have to move on and, and make way for players coming in and just for clarity Nigel and confirmation I take it therefore that he will miss the last two games to avoid potential injury yeah and that was why once we were safe uh, there's no point in him you know being included the last thing even in training is we want to twist a knee or something like that which jeopardizes any potential contract uh, that he could get for, for next season and beyond so I think we deserve he deserves that and out of respect to him we certainly won't be uh, won't be in, in, involving him Elsewhere, the versatile James Perch has signed an extended contract today. Yeah, yeah. It's always get, nice to get the youngsters tied up uh, and uh, for next season. So uh, we're, we're thrilled that, uh, that Perch is staying. I think he's been outstanding in the last few months, uh, whether he's been right back, centre half, did a bit of left back on Saturday. Uh, he's one of those characters uh, on and off the pitch uh, that is just brilliant to have around. So. Uh, and he wants to stay and he wants to be part of what we're trying to do next season. So I think he's as important as anybody. All the contracts we've done and some of the younger players, I think that's as important a one as any for next season. Where do you see James Perch's best position? Don't know. Honestly, uh, I ju you just know that when you put him on the pitch, wherever you put him, uh, he's going to perform to a certain level. Uh, and that's enough for us. The positions are relevant. Off the field, he carries himself very well indeed. You can tell that he's been at higher clubs, bigger clubs, because he, he seems to bring that experience with him here on a sort of day-to-day -day basis. He's a great example of how to be a professional footballer for all the younger players at the club. And we talk about the importance of senior players and so on. Um, it's not just senior players, it's good senior players. You know, and we put Stephen Quinn into that bracket and Jake Wright as well. There's a reason they've played at the highest level. Uh, and that's apparent when you see them on a daily basis. What does he offer you on a match day in the dressing room and in midweek, therefore? He offers us uh, a level of competitiveness similar, similar to Stephen Quinn, where it hasn't dwindled despite them now being, what, 34, 35. Uh, that edge uh, and that will to win uh, is still there, as strong as it, I think it was when he was 18. Probably even a bit stronger, because when you get to that age, you know you're not going to be playing for the next five years, uh, and you think, right, this could be my last season or whatever. Uh, and every single game you want to win, every single training session you want to win the eight sides and you want to compete. Uh, and that's there absolutely in abundance with, with Perchy and, and the other seniors. Yeah, you mentioned, obviously, we speak about James Perch, but also touch upon Stephen Quinn. Uh, those two with real experience in their careers. Are they, without wishing to head into hyperbole, 
gems in the sand because you see so many players come down to this level, don't you? And their enthusiasm for the game burns out like a smouldering wick. Yeah, very poetic. Uh, but uh, I think because they like playing football, they enjoy playing football and they want to win. Uh, I don't think the level, they understand their age and everything, uh, is that important to them. Uh, they're enjoying still playing football uh, and they want to compete on a weekly basis. And I would say they've been our two most consistent players in the last few months. Last two games of the season now, Nigel. Yep. How do you approach them? We'll try and win them, like we did at Salford. You know, we went to Salford, conceded early on, controlled the rest of the first half, should have been at least level at half-time. Gave another soft goal away and we ended up losing, but I think we ended up with more possession, more shots than them. That's a way at a playoff team. Uh, and I think that's happened quite a few times uh, this season, home and away. So we approach Oldham the same. I have to be a bit careful with Oldham because they're as, as expansive and as attacking minded and threatening as you'll get in the league most top goal scorers I think in the league mm. have also conceded the same amount uh, and we know from our game just a few months ago the 3-2 uh, what an open game it can be uh, I think the last few games of the season we saw some of the results last night 3-3s 2-2s and everything throughout the leagues you know uh, I, I think everybody we're both safe uh, I think everybody can relax and play they are perhaps Oldham Athletic the most unpredictable side in Skybet League 2 as you mentioned they have the best attacking record in the league. They've also got the worst defensive record in the league. I think they've been involved in 145 goals in their games this term. Apart from you saying them being expansive, what exactly do you prepare for when you come up against a side so unpredictable? Uh, just that. We make the players aware uh, that they, of their capabilities and say, you know, that's what we're telling them how, how good they are at scoring goals. But we, we know that from just a few months ago. You know, we, we played pretty well there and scored three goals away from home ourselves. Um, so, as always, we'll make them aware uh, of their dangers, uh, but also be concentrating on ourselves as usual. And we've got a few threats as well. Uh, I think we're pretty good going forward. Uh, and when you get Perchy scoring and making goals as well from right back, um, I, I think we can, we can be as threatening as any team in the league. Might you experiment this Saturday with personnel, possibly shape? Yeah, maybe. Uh, we'll see what we've got available. Ollie Clark's a doubt. Uh, obviously, Faz Rawson's out. Uh, so we'll, we'll see who's available uh, in the best way. We still want to win. You know, we, want, we want to win the game. It's our last home game. I think our home form generally has been pretty good uh, in the last four or five months. Uh, we haven't had our rewards, I don't think, in terms of points that our performances deserve. Um, so we'd like to go out. Let's go out with a win and finish the season with three points at home. Yeah, how much emphasis do you put on that heading into next season that you win this Saturday at home? Well, I think it's important that the last few games, you know, we won the two that got us safe uh, and we want to continue the level of performance uh, first and foremost and then hopefully the results will follow. But it can be a, a good thing to go into the summer, certainly. And also, I want the supporters to watch our home form, uh, which is, we say has been good and I think entertaining and say, I want to come and watch that in person next season.